Hello, and welcome to Opening to Your Truth. For the next chapter in this series on deeply held belief systems, we're going to be talking about the hot button topic of religion. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. <laughs> now, religion can have a profound influence on a person, their interior life, and the way they view the world, uh, or a negligible effect, really depending upon how deeply involved in that particular religion the individual is, how ardent their belief, or whether they just practice it in a sort of culturally appropriate superficial ma matter, but don't really integrate the foundational elements of the religion. Uh, so this will be topic for the former who really are devout. Now, different religions have different aspects, different ways of seeing the world. Some are much more open and inclusive some are very rigid and exclusive, meaning that some religions say either you believe what I believe, you have the exact same faith as I do, or things are not going to go so well for you. Uh, there's insiders and outsiders. Other religions say, okay, take what you will. I have a whole smorgasbord of offerings and see what fits you and whatever you like, whatever it fits you, feel free to take what you don't, you don't have to. Now, religion can have a very salutary or expansive effect on an individual or very constricting or closed effect on individual. Religion can tend to open your heart or it can close your heart. Religion can help you become much more on a path of service to others or make you even more on a path of service to self. Thus, religion is very, very powerful in its effects on individual. In cultures that have deeply held beliefs, deeply held religious beliefs, some of them benefit tremendously from these belief systems. Others are tortured and punished because they punish themselves because of the constrictions and rigidity of their beliefs. So let's take a look. I'm not going to go into naming names, but we think you'll be able to recognize what your aspect is just from listening. But some religions believe that the really path to godliness is by helping others service to others, helping your fellow human being. And some religions even extended to helping the planet and helping wildlife, where there is a real understanding that all life is interconnected. And there's no such thing as humans on one side, and then there's the planet and all the animals and all the plants, and they're not us. So we don't have to worry about them. Uh, some religions really espouse more of a green consciousness and understanding that without everyone thriving and everything thriving, ultimately nothing can thrive. And others say, no, we have to take care of ourselves. We have to accumulate money. We have to accumulate power. And who cares about the environment? Who cares about everyone who's not part of us? 
we're the ones that are important, we need to do well, and to let the others fend for themselves. Again, religions can have beliefs all over the place. For people who are of a religion which is very much pro-humanity, there is a sense of a desire to grow in peace and calm and connectivity. Some religions espouse a form of meditation through practice. Uh, some meditate through dance or through singing, chanting. Others do it through ritual. And all of these try and strive to help the individual to really get in touch with themselves and open up their hearts and to connect with others with more or less a degree of success. It depends upon the individual and the particular path they're following. But many religions do strive to have a person become it's called a good human being, a good person. And it is my fervent belief that all religions at their core espouse this philosophy. All religions, when they started, came with the intention of helping people to grow, to be more connected to themselves, and to be better human beings to others and be, in a sense, stewards of the planet. But some religions became much more corrupted over time than others. There was politics, there was search for money, for power, and cultural belief systems, which may not have been very compatible with the religious systems, tended to influence the religion. And then the religion changes, because what is religion after all but an outgrowth of the culture in which it's being expressed. Just as a briefly, look at Catholicism. It is practiced very, very differently in different parts of the world because of the cultures in which it lives. The Catholicism of Central America, for example, is very different from the Catholicism in Italy. It's the same religion, same belief systems, but the practices are so different because it incorporates a lot of the tradition and belief systems of the indigenous peoples. And therefore, even though it's the same religion, it varies. And some religions are like that. They vary tremendously depending upon who is practicing it. Buddhism has the same thing, very culturally specific in many ways, though there are branches of Buddhism, which tend, some tend to be practiced more in one culture, some in another, and they come with their own sets of belief systems. Uh, look at Islam. Islam can be a wonderful force for unity, for growth. Or, well, we all know the other aspects of Islam and the more fundamentalist side. Fundamentalism in any religion tends to cause the person to believe, okay, we are the group. We need to prosper. And if we do it at the expense of others, that's fine because they're not one of us. And other religions say, if everyone doesn't prosper, then ultimately no one prospers. That's more of an idealistic view, <laughs> practiced much more in theory than in reality, but it's a goal to strive towards. The way it affects the individual is that some people because of their religion, strive to become, in a sense, a holy person. They strive to replicate the teachings of their faith. 
and incorporate it in practice. Others do not necessarily like this form of openness and incorporation, and they practice a form of constriction. Their hearts close, their minds close. They become very rigid and very controlled and controlling. So religion can have very much of a positive or a negative effect. It all depends upon a combination of the psyche, the psychological makeup of the individual, and how they approach their religion, and the religion itself. All religions can be ultimately opening and heartwarming and pro-humanity, or constricting and closing and building up walls and boundaries. It depends upon the psychology of the individual, and some religions are more predisposed toward exclusivity than others. But there is no such thing as this is a good religion, this is a bad religion. There's only ways of practicing it that says, I understand that humanity is important and I want to incorporate and help everyone, service to others, or we only care about our in-group and those who are outside, eh, who cares? That tends to be the more fundamentalist end of really any religion. So, I hope this is interesting. The next time we're going to talk more about religion and today was more of a global discussion about religion. Next time we'll get into some specifics as to what I've seen religion actually do to individuals and how it helps them or severely damages their life. So, my name is Barry Naroff. I'm a professional spiritual intuitive. I do readings, work with individuals, couples, also a New York State licensed psychotherapy. I take insurance if it's out of network and your deductible has been close to being met or if you have a low deductible. And if you wish to contact me, my email is barry at birthrighttherapy.com. And I also have a webpage called Birthright Therapy. If you wish to, there's a comment section right under the video on YouTube. Write me a comment and we'll be glad to incorporate whatever critique you may have, requests. I'll do the best I can. So, oh yes, YouTube algorithm. Um, it seems to benefit very much if you subscribe. So if you like what you hear, please do click on the subscribe tab and that would be great. And if you want to be notified when new postings will come, click on the bell. So, thank you very much. I hope this has been of interest. And until the next time.